so I've done a little tiny whoop oh shit there goes the print I'll have to wash that again Hi guys and welcome back to my dark room. I was intending to go out today and do some long exposure cloud photography but uh, it's way too windy. I was intending to use some Adox Silver Max that was kindly sent to me by Instagram, a Casey Face or Mr. Casey Face all the way in Los Angeles and uh, I wanted to go out and use this silver Adox Silver Max and try it out and see what I come up with uh, doing some long exposures on the clouds but it's so windy I just thought it ain't worth it. My tripod's going to be doing this so I scrapped that idea for another day and decided to come in the dark room and make a print instead. The other day I had some family over and they uh, brought along with them, obviously they would, is a little boy, is a little two year old called Freddie, my nephew. And just before they went, I took a portrait of Freddie against window light. And uh, when they went, my mother-in-law got wind of it and she said, can I have a picture of it as well? So I thought best not upset the mother-in-law. So uh, I'm gonna be making her a print for, for her home. And this is the contact sheet I made of Freddie. Uh, pretty simple portraits. He's quite a wriggly little kid, bless him. And I managed to get a couple of nice shots out of this. And one of the particular ones I liked, which I've already sort of marked off, is this one here. If you can see that, uh, he's just looking away from the camera, looking out to the window. And it's quite a nice portrait of him. It's quite difficult to do toddlers sometimes because they do wriggle and muck about and stuff, um, you know. And uh, it is what it is. So, but it's a nice photograph. I'm going to make a print of that. But my whole point of doing the darkroom session is I've got a few new tools that I'm going to be trying out and showing you. And also I get a lot of questions as well about Exhausted Developer. So I've managed to save some Exhausted Developer over the last week or so. And uh, I'm going to be playing with that and trying it out. So you guys that are new to darkroom works or always have wondered if old developer works or whatever. Um, you'll see what I'm doing and hopefully learn a little. So uh, let's crack on. I'll show you some of the stuff that I've got here from the antique shop. Then I'll make some test prints. Then I'll make a print. And then uh, with the old, with the exhausted developer, then we'll do the same with the fresh developer. Whoop. I'm just gonna show you a couple of bits that I found in the antique shop. First of all, let's get rid of that. The first thing I came across was a new enlarger lens. This cost me 15 quid. This is a um, Nikon EO Nikkor 50 mil F4 enlarger lens. And um, it's metal, it looks well built. There's no fungus in it at all. The blades work really well and it fits my larger. So um, I don't know where, what era it's from, probably the 80s or, or maybe early 90s. But um, yeah, this is the enlarger lens here. There is an F 2.8 version, which is apparently much more superior than this. But, uh, you know, for 15 quid, I'm willing to give it a shot and see how it works. This is my old enlarger lens that I use, this one here. And uh, it goes to F16 from f2.8 you can see that all the way to f16 and it's a schneider kruznak i think that's how you pronounce it uh it's plastic it's pretty cheaply made um so i'm not sure if this is better optics than this but uh, we're going to put this to one side because i'm not using that for this session and to find my focus look at this i managed to get hold of a, a patterson focus finder in the antique shop as well and this cost me 10 quid and I've never used one of these before. I've seen them, but I've never bothered going online and buying one. Um, basically because I've always used this one, which shows me, uh, it doesn't show me the grain, but it shows me um, part of the image that I can focus sharply on. But uh, I'm looking forward to using this one because I'll be able to focus on the grain. So if I can get the focus um, real tack sharp on the grain, then the rest of the image obviously is going to be tack sharp as well. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing how I'll get on with this. So I'm going to put my old focuser away. I'm not using that. So two things I've got new so far is the enlarger lens and the focus finder. Um, so I'm looking forward to playing with them. Then I've got a um, enlarging exposure scale sent to me kindly by an Instagrammer called Tom Harper and Tom messaged me as his card there. Tom messaged me and he said, um, I've got no use for it. He said, if I send it to you, maybe you'll have some use for it. So I was like, yeah, thanks very much, mate. I appreciate that. And it is here, it's like a five by four transparency. And I guess you put it down on the paper, hit it with however, I don't know. I'll have to read the instructions. I'll tell you as I go along, I haven't used it yet. 
But uh, I guess you put it down on a paper, hit it with some light, and you've got numbers around here, which will tell you what your exposure should be once you look at the test print, uh, whichever looks best. So um, I'm going to be using that test print as well. But I've got my old um, test machine, which you guys have seen before. Um, I think it's an old Jessup's one. Um, and you just slide it three seconds, six, blah, 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 and so on. So that's the old test machine that I use, test print machine that I use. But I'm not going to put that away. I'm going to put this side by side and see um, what I'd normally get compared to this. So I'm going to keep these two out um, for this darkroom session. So I'm going to be making a print of my nephew uh, from a mother-in-law. And I also get a lot of questions about developers, about exhausted developer. So I've been using Ilford's multi-grade um, lately, and I've got two lots here already made up. This one is about, it's about mm, probably about a, a week or so old, and I've been using it on and off, um, playing around and dabbling with. Nothing for any important prints, but just for um, playing around with. And I've also got some fresh developer that I've made here. You can see the difference in colour. So this one's pretty much on its way out. But um, I'll show you the test that I'll normally do to see if I can continue using this developer, which is a maximum black test. I'll show you that in a little while. But uh, the first print we're going to use that I make is going to be on this old semi-exhausted developer. And then I'll make another one with the fresh developer and we'll put them side by side. So you guys can, um, if you've never, if you've already, always wondered about it, you'll soon see in a little while. So um, let's get on with making the print using my new gear and uh, we'll do some tests using these two test machines and see what we can come up with using the semi-old developer. But first of all, we're gonna do a max black test and see if this developer is good enough to use. Right, so the first thing I need to do is just test this developer, make sure I can still use it. And to do that, I'm gonna be testing for maximum black. Just to get a quick test strip out. I have to make one out of this 10 by eight paper. No, where's my scissors? Get me scissors. Just cut a strip like so. Da -da. Okay, there's my test strip there. This is just to test the developer to see if I can still use it. There you go, just a little test strip, stick it on the enlarger like so. I'm not using the test strip machine because I want all the black strips to be very close together. So, so this is the first part, it's going to get light for five seconds and I'm going to go right across the paper. Five. You could go shorter, but I'm going for five. Ten. Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, and then the last piece here. I'm just going to let that burn. Ages one, two, three, four, five. This paper won't get any blacker, so once it's hit its maximum black, it's, you can't get any blacker than black. So, uh, I'm going to leave this on the on the under the light for quite a while about a minute. So, I know that that should be if that doesn't go any blacker than the others, then that developer's knackered. Okay, in it goes. So if this paper doesn't reach maximum black at all, then the that means the developer's not even going to be worth using for any printing because any of your blacks on your print won't be black. They'll be a, a, a muddy grey maybe. Let's see what we get. 
So this is the test strip I've just done, and I've got five seconds, 10. You can barely see it on the, on the camera, um, but I can see five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and from 15 seconds onwards, the whole strip is completely black. There's no change in tonality at all. It's completely jet black. So that's my max black test for this developer. Five, 10, 15 seconds onwards, I'm jet black. So I'm pretty much good to go with that developer to continue printing, um, even though, it's it's been used quite a bit over the last week i mean i wouldn't use it for any any prints that um uh, are important to me but or that i'm giving away to people or whatever but for playing around in the dark room or practicing that developer's fine so um i'm going to make a print with that developer but then we'll make another print with the uh, new developer later so let's get on with the test test prints for this um for the portrait okay so i've just turned the uh, larger lamp on and i'm now Got my melon head stuck in this grain finder. And I'm just focusing in very slowly. It's like when I was a kid looking through microscopes at my own blood and stuff and flies and shit like that. Right, there's the grain. So that's in focus, or it should be. Let's see if that works. Uh, let's do a test strip then. Sixty seconds, it says. So let's dial sixty seconds into the timer. Turn the lamp off. Get a bit of paperuni under here. The only thing I can see with this, uh, the only thing I can see by using the exposure scale, is that I'm pretty much wasting a whole sheet of paper. Whereas with test strips. I only use small strips of the paper, so, but hey-ho, that's, uh, right. So it says to place that like so. I'll turn the red light around so you can see what I'm doing. So I've placed the, yeah, you can see that. So I've placed the um, finger jig on there. Right, and it says to burst it for 60 seconds, so that's what I'm going to do. Hit light on there for 60 seconds, see what happens. There it goes. Okay, 60 seconds is up. And in it goes. I'll leave it in there for one minute. There should be enough for resin paper. And the temperature of this developer. Just zoom on the, on the, zoom in on that so you can see. If I'm out of focus on this video today, guys, I've not got my <laughs> reading glasses in the dark room, so I'm not going to be able to see the video screen too well because I'm blind as a bat. Right, 60 seconds that was. So uh, two, three, four, five. Uh, What's this? Two, three, four, five. I think it says five, six, eight. Yeah, they're, obviously they're all nowhere near long enough. But this is interesting to see. That's um, there goes the timer. Shut it, timer. Right, we'll put this in the stop bath. And it goes right. So I'll let that fix for about a minute or so, get it out, and we'll have a look. So I'm just squeezing off the excess water off the print now, slapped it on the wall. Uh, you should really let it dry completely before you decide how long you need to expose for on a test print, but I'm not going to be in here all day. Uh, so we've got two, three, four, six, eight, twelve. What would that be, 16? I don't even know what that says. 24, 32 seconds. Um, pretty difficult to judge, really, even small little segments like that, but 24 seconds. Let's do a, a test at 24 seconds, not 30. One minute, and that's a 25 second projection. Let's see what that looks like.
And the last print I did on this was fiber paper. So this is completely different. There's no point in me using the same times as I did on my fiber. Um, this is a completely new test for this. So I'm just as in the dark as anyone else as you guys are. Don't look too bad actually. It's just coming up to the minute mark. Oh, let's get this out. And there we go. So wipe that off. Let's see what I think of that. So according to the sheet that I used, um, I've gone for 25 seconds just where his nose is. That's what the uh, exposure scale gave me. It hasn't worked out too bad at all. I don't even think there's any reason for me to do a normal test print on it, to be honest with you. Okay, so this is the second test using the Fresh Developer. And they're exactly the same times as the semi-exhaustive developer, I'll call it. There you go. Let's get that squeegee off. Normally I'd let these drink, uh, prints dry on the rack, but as just for video purposes, I'm just squeegeeing them off. Uh, for speed I suppose right let's have a look at these so this is the uh, developer that I've been using for over a week on various stuff and this is the fresh developer mix today both the same developers and I can't see any difference between the two to be honest with you so that week old developer I can still keep playing with it um, <coughs> so excuse me so hopefully that answers uh, some questions from some people asking me about um, using developer that's uh, over a week old there you go They've come out looking identical too. So I'm just going to go ahead now and make my final print for my mother-in-law. Um, I'm quite happy with it so far, but I just lost. This area is just too dark. So I'm just going to, um, on the next print, just dodge a little bit of information back here, hopefully. Uh, I like the light coming down from the window light. And he's literally only uh, about a foot away from a patio window with, with nice soft light coming through. Um, and although I do like this one light, um, portrait stuff even um, in a studio I'll always use one light portrait and never use rims and over over complicate things I like it that way but this is just a little bit you know I could have done with a little bit of filling um, reflector this side but um, I'm going to try and recover this see if I can recover this um, on the enlarger just doing a little tiny bit of dodging this side let's see what happens all right so another piece of paper And I'm just going to use a dodge tool, circular dodge tool for this. Just a little circular dodge tool like so. I'm not sure if you guys can see the projection when I, when I hit the light on it, but um, you should be able to see something. But I'm literally just going to dodge this area probably for about five seconds and see what happens. This area here, sorry. One, two, three, four. Left it for a bit longer actually, I'm just moving it around. See what happens there. A little bit longer. Let's see what that looks like, eh? So I've done a little tiny, whoop. Oh shit, there goes the print. I'll have to wash that again. It's real tricky doing video in the dark room because I'm trying to walk around tripods and bloody lights and what not oh. so it hasn't really made much of a difference I did do some dodging on this side just waving it through pretty much uh, the whole exposure but it hasn't even made a dent in it really um, I can just I have recovered very slightly uh, over this side but you know it is what it is I'm not going to sit there and, and spend a month of Sundays trying to make a, a master print that'd be like uh, an amateur cake maker sitting there trying to make uh, make make a cake for bloody Harrods or something 
you know this is dark room stuff it's meant to be a bit of fun enjoyable i'm certainly not going to frustrate myself over it so that was uh, just a bit of fun in the dark room i wanted to come out and test this the uh, exposure scale that was kindly sent to me by tom, tom harper off instagram and uh Thanks very much, Tom. I really appreciate you sending me that. I've tried it out. Uh, I will use it again, but I would say the only thing is, is I had to use, I probably didn't have to, but I uh, ended up using a whole sheet of 10 by 8 to put the um, exposure scale on, whereas my um, normal test strips, on a 10 by 8 would give me uh, four or five strips to use. Um, but other than that, it seemed to work pretty well. I was quite impressed. I'm going to keep it in my dark room, and I will use it again at some point. Also, my focus finder, the grain finder, I'm going to use this more often. Um, as I said to you at the start, that's, that's the one I've always been using because I got that from an antique shop. I'm not one of those guys that are going to run out and, and buy all, all the brand new gear and stuff. I don't believe in, 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 in wasting money um, for, a, for a small hobby and projects that I do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I got that for 10 quid in an antique shop and I'm going to start using that. I will still use this one, but between the two, this one's quite good fun. I can focus right in on the grain, and I've never seen that before. Over the years I've been doing doing darkroom work, I've never had one, so that's pretty cool. And the enlarger lens, um, I don't know, I'll have to make a, two prints together to see what I can come up with um, to see the difference between the, the Nikon and the other one that I've been using for years. Um, but as far as I can see, that lens, the Nikon, the Nikon lens was okay. Um, so is my other one okay? So uh, I'll, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know which one was better to be honest with you. But I'll carry on using the Nikon one because it sounds good when I say the word Nikon. And the developer, I didn't see any difference um, when I made the two different prints in the two developers. The one that was over a week old and the brand new fresh developer as well. But uh, the little test that I did at the start, which was the Max Black test which I've still got up here on the wall, it's dry now. Um, that showed me that that developer can produce max black within a minute. So that weak old developer is still okay to use. However, if someone purchased a print off me, I'd be using fresh chemicals. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be risking an older developer. So the question that people ask me is about does the old, old developer or, or weak old developer, can I still use it? Just go ahead and try it and, and make some tests and see what you can come up with. But, uh, I'm happy with the print, you know, it's, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit there for a month of Sundays trying to, trying to make a master print for it to sit on, on my mother-in-law's wall. Um, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed making the print and just out of interest for people, I shot that on uh, all row film and using a Olympus OM20, so uh, against window light, real simple portrait photography. Anyway guys, I hope you liked the video um, and thank you very much for the subscribers and likers and also the Patreons and the people that send me stuff. I really do appreciate it as always. And uh, take care. I'll see you next time. Cheers. So I'm saying it's always, it's always seems difficult. So I'm, where are you? Oh, there you are. It always seems difficult sometimes to be making videos in a small dark room because when I'm trying to, um, when I'm trying to show stuff or demonstrate whatever you, what I'm, things I'm doing, I'm just tidying up at the moment. Um, it's always tricky because I'm always bending over tripods or, or bending over cameras um, in a small dark room. It's uh, not the easiest of things to do, but it's the best I can do and the best I've got. So you have to get on with it, don't you? It just goes over me and larger. Night nights. Stop any dust getting into it. And uh, take the tripod out and the light, and that's pretty much it. See you guys. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.